You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. So uh, just for the people that don't know, uh, yeah, tell everyone a little about yourself. We, we actually met, I guess, via a live stream, right? That's kind of when we yeah. first interacted. Yeah, that's uh, you were doing a live stream and I was making comments and uh, you actually went on Google Maps and looked up uh, one of the local reservoirs here, Hunting Run. And uh, I think you were amazed that there is a body of water like that down here. And, I'm uh, I'm amazed by the water you have down there. I got on Google Earth later that night after the live stream, and I was shocked. You guys have so many fisheries down that way that I didn't even know about. Yeah, I mean, the biggest thing is it doesn't get broadcast very much because all the reservoirs are electric only. Um, and so you don't have a lot of the big boats out there like you do at Anna. So for someone like me that has that small little bass raider with my trolling motor on it, these reservoirs are just perfect. I, I, I can go out there and just have a blast all day. It's not overfished. Um, everyone you meet out there is really nice. And, um, you know, I, there's a couple guys that are local. Um, the one place which is called Lake of the Woods, um, you actually have to be a member and get a permit and things like that to fish that place because it's an it's a HOA community. Okay. Um, but there's a guy out there, uh, Titus Pope. He has a he has a YouTube channel, Your Next Cast, and uh, he does a lot of fishing at Hunting Run and at Lake of the Woods. And I mean, he he catches fish like crazy. Uh, my other buddy Shane Flint from Shane Flint Outdoors, uh, he posts a video pretty much every Friday. And um, this last one, he pulled in like two five pounders during the video. And he lost another one at the boat. Uh, he actually had it in the net, and it jumped out of the net, spitter's lure, and that one was double digits. Um, so yeah, those guys are really good. They show they show what they're using, how they do it, and things like that. And um, you know, I'm, I collaborate with them quite a bit. Um, Shane Flint has just been a wealth of knowledge for me. Uh, so yeah, he's he's really good. He's another guy that you guys really might want to have on your channel because um, he he does some really good stuff. But um, about myself, let's go from there. I grew up in the state of Maine, so it was native brook trout in these tiny streams that are as wide as a table. Um, I you know started out just using basically worms and a hook. Then I switched to different tactics. I went to uh, fly fishing, tied my own flies, and then boom, I joined the Navy. So I did my time in the Navy, uh, didn't fish hardly at all. Uh, the only time I fished is when I got stationed down in Key West, Florida. And you have to fish down there. I That's mean, not a bad place to get stationed. <laughs> well, it's, it's not, but after about six months, you realize that you're on a three by five mile island. And there's not a whole lot there. Mm -hmm. uh, the fishing was amazing. Everything from tarpon to ye uh, yellowfin snapper to mutton slash mangrove snapper. Uh, it was a blast. Uh, used to go out and catch cobia and grouper out there on the reefs. So, yeah, that was good fishing there. Um, I ended up getting stationed back in Virginia. Stopped fishing again. Uh, got out of the Navy. Um, now I work at the Pentagon and I support them. I've been doing the same job for 20 years and I just really got back into fishing the last four to five years. Um, started out fishing a local Rappahannock here because I found out they were smallmouth. So why not go back to what I'm used to? I went up there and just started crushing smallmouth bass in the Rappahannock and then, uh, took a couple trips out. You know, rented a John boat at some of these reservoirs, went out there, got hooked on. I, I'd never caught a largemouth bass until I moved here. Really? It's always been, yeah, always been smallmouth. Um, so I jump on these reservoirs and I start using smallmouth tactics, um, essentially Ned Rake. Mm -hmm. And I, I was catching fish. Well, then I started watching videos and talking to different people and doing different things. And, you know, now 
if you can see the wall behind me, uh, I'm big into largemouth. <laughs> uh, I still go up on the Rappahannock. Uh, you know, weather like this, the water comes up. You got to leave it alone. You got to wait until that water settles back down. Um, but one unique thing is on the Rappahannock, there's a group and it's called, oh, you still got me? We got you. We got you. We're oh, here. Okay. Um, it's called Friends of the Rappahannock. And a local Boy Scout troop actually built a, uh, it's, it's a live broadcast webcam so that you can see the water level in the Rappahannock. Um, so that is really, you can actually look at it and see if the water is really muddy, whether it's clear, how high it is, what the flow is. And that's just a great tool. You know, I wish more people did that. Um, last year on the reservoirs here, they lowered the water so much that a guy on a John boat could not get in the water. Um, it was kayaks and it was, uh, you know, people like me with my little bass raider, we could get in, but guys in John boats or bigger bass boats, they couldn't get in. So essentially it ended up where it was like, probably two months of fishing for me that a lot of other guys couldn't go and do because the water level was so low, but they put in a new ramp. Um, they did some more stuff at Lake Mooney. So that's a little bit easier there, but it's still real shallow where they, where they have the ramp. So um, Marty, Marty, I know we're going to have you on yeah. the podcast too. Yeah. And spoilers guys, we're going to have him on the podcast and we're really going to really get into the meat and potatoes of the fisheries down there. Um, but what I really want to know, like, what got you into YouTube? What, what, I want to know about your journey. Like, how did you come to the point that that you're going to try to become a YouTube star? Well, first of all, I'm not going to be a star. <laughs> <laughs> um, what I was doing was I, I started going to these local fishing shows, like the one that you're at right now. And I met some great people and saw what they were doing. And I thought to myself, you know, someone needs to get this information out there very much like you want to do. And you and I talked and there's so many local guys that make soft plastics and hard baits and spinner baits and crank bait, all this stuff. And my big thing is this. You look at my wall and I tell people on my on my YouTube video, if I want a particular color that is not made by strike king or you know all these guys back here i can call a local guy and he will make it and I, I the proof is sitting right here in front of me i got some things to show you just so you can see the comparison i mean it's it's unbelievable you know uh, let me grab let me grab this one right here there we go sorry about that all right look this is a perfect example of what i talk about um, this here, that's a Z-Man razor shads. Okay. It's a great bait. It's a great trailer for chatter baits. Obviously Z-Man makes the chatter baits, but then I turn around and there's a, a guy called Nova lure company and that's his bait. Huh. All right. So. I mean, we all know Z-Man and what they do, but really, you know, if if I called Matt, if I called Matt from Nova, Nova Lua Company and said, hey, I really like the red, but I want it darker, he's going to pour it for me. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I, I sent you a whole list in an email, but it, it's just things that, that we can do. You know, I got a local guy, Dak Bates. He, pour, he pours these beavers. <laughs> you know, yeah. There's a little bit of a size difference here, but this is this one right here is big by bait. This here is Nova Lure, Lure, Lure uh, not Nova, but uh, Dak Baits. They'll do whatever you want. Yeah, and, and um, not to cut you, and not to cut you off, but that's yeah. something Jared with your business too. It's like there's a relationship that you can have when you support your local businesses that you don't get from Amazon, right. you don't get from Walmart right. or Bass Pro Shop, and so yeah, every now and then there's a bait that no one else can duplicate. But for the most part, if you can support somebody local, especially with supply chains the way they are, you might not be able to get 
right. you know, a Z-Man product, but you can go to your local guy and support right. him and keep him in business yeah, because he's hurting right now. Correct. And you're right, Marty. And really, like you're showing those, it's as much profile as, as anything. Uh, there's a lot of other factors going to it. Scent, you know, the plastic that they're using. There's a lot of things, but... Uh, when you get the profile, like you're saying, like there's a lot of, uh, we get we get stuck on a name brand, that's branding and a name, and, and yes, it'll catch fish, but to his point, like being in bait and tackle shops, we got 4,000 square foot of nothing but fishing, and it's like everybody's got their, their go-to confidence bait, and they're square by that color and that bait and that size, but it's it's 20 different things for everybody, so it's uh, we're naive to think going to lock into one thing so i agree with you 100 percent to try to support local and it'll still catch fish to your point oh yeah uh just last weekend i fished a tournament with the outcast bass club of virginia uh myself and my buddy uh david who runs dak baits uh we finished fourth our very first tournament and uh we ended up using drop shot with his trick worm in a grape with red flake. And, and I mean, we caught 17 bass. The next highest amount of bass was six that someone else caught. Now they were bigger, so they won, but they caught six fish, we caught 17. So, you know, culling 12 fish to get our best five using this one bait. And I, I wish I had them with me because I'm out, um, but it's, it works. So, you know, look at your local bait companies. And, and like I said, I got a whole list for you, uh, Thomas, and I'll, I sent that to you in an email, but I'll pull up the links so that you can post all the links to these local guys. Um, as a matter of fact, you're going to have Derek and Daniel on. I talked to Derek, I think Friday, and he's going to come on and do an interview with me on my YouTube channel. He's there right now. Obviously, you're going to have me yes. <laughs> yeah. But uh, all hand-painted crankbaits and, and whopper ploppers and things like that. And they actually did a specific bait for that high school, the Indians. I, I think their colors are orange, white, and blue. He did a specific bait paint job on them just wow. for that with That's their awesome. – uh, yeah, with their logo on the side of it. So just kind of a novelty thing. But when when an, a privately owned small business bait company is willing to do something like that, that just shows you what they would be willing to do for an individual. And no, I think absolutely. that's just fantastic. No, absolutely. And guys, then on the replay, I'm going to link in the episode description all the bait companies. We talked about the links that he was talking about. Um, for the live stream, I can't do that. But once I re-upload it and you want to watch it again, it'll all be there. All the baits, all the companies will, will be there available to you. Um, but I have a list right up here. Did you just want to start start going through some of these? Sure, sure. Uh, I got the list here, I think, in the exact order that I sent it to you. Uh, the Fisherman's Attic, I believe, uh, is, is – or maybe I, I might have started with Funk, That's right. Funk yep. Buster Baits. You're correct, uh, Fisherman's uh, Attic. Okay, Fisherman's Attic. So they were at, my, at the last two shows that I went to. And for the beginning fishermen, they are a great group of people to contact. They have used fishing rods and reels that they have refurbished and redone. You can get them at a good price. And there's quality stuff there. I mean, you know, people can't afford to go out and buy, you know, uh, what is it, KSAC or all these different big name uh, rods and reels, but man, used stuff that has been refurbished, you can get it at a good price. Fisherman's Attic is a great place to go. Uh, Funk, Bus Funk Buster Baits, that's another one. They make spinner baits and, and uh, buzz baits and all that type of chatter. They have their own chatter baits. Um, DAC baits, I've already mentioned them once. Um, right now, he just, <laughs> and it's great. He just uh, received an, a $500 order from a place called Catfish Kelly's Country Store. And I believe that's in the in the uh, King George area here by Fredericksburg. I got to get out there because what I got told is they feature primarily local bait companies. Oh, wow. So I got to get out there and, and check that out. Um, 
Nova Lure Company, a gentleman named Matt. Uh, I had him on my last video showing a bunch of stuff that he does. And I mean, he does everything from hard baits to soft plastic, pours his own net heads. And really, some of his baits are just, just absolutely beautiful. Um, really crisp, really clean. Um, so that's that's a good one. Um, drag set fishing. He is 16 years old. Wow. And he decided to do this. Awesome. And, and look at this. I mean, that's his packaging right there. For a 16-year-old, that's pretty, that's pretty yeah. awesome. I, I, I tell you what, and he's a great kid. Where's look at that. He's, uh, he's somewhere here in northern Virginia. I think he's up in the Woodbridge area maybe. Yeah, that's great. Um, but look at, look at that bait. I mean, look at how clean that is. You know, cool. it is. It's and and he he does some really nice stuff. So again, a 16 year old kid doing this because he just wants to. Um, it gave him something to do during COVID. That's when he started, and uh, he's been at both of the shows that I've been to. Um, the next one is Crunk's crankbaits. Uh, yeah, unreal unreal he does a lot of neat stuff like this and i mean this is this is good quality stuff yeah this is this is one of my favorites right here check that out oh my goodness that's a beautiful bait and i've been throwing this and i got teeth marks on it already all right um yeah this is uh this is Nova Lua Company. This is one of their jerk baits that they pour, and it's a it's a very translucent one. I I, I really like that. Um, yeah, I got to learn to hold it up to the camera, right? There you go. Um, and oh, that looks really good. And guys, let us know in the comments section if you have any questions. Please feel free put them in the comments. I'll try to get to them uh, so we can have uh, Marty answer them for you. I like that chartreuse belly. Yeah, that chartreuse yeah. belly is really cool. And that's from uh, that's from Nova Lua Company also. Also, it's so, so it's yeah. So, it's so funny when you talk about like those local lures. Like that is really the genre of big swim baits. Mm -hmm. It wasn't yeah, big absolutely. ones. It was people that would yep. mold either the carcass of a trout, spray yes. paint it, get the details. And honestly, sometimes no two are alike. Like, yeah. A lot of times people want that. You want it to look exactly like exact colors, you know. But in that that industry, you're talking about. It can be close, but sometimes it's those unique differences. And, and you look at fish. You pull fish out of the water. Everyone's no two different. fish are going to look Everyone's exactly like yeah. either, so. And like, especially with like jigs. Like, how many wow, guys have like a specific jig? Yes, absolutely. Oh, wow. Look at that. Huh. That's, That's cool just a lip list. You know, and, and I picked up a lot of stuff from these local guys, and I just love them. You know, they go for up on the Potomac catching them smallmouth. That's a good color. That one's a Who's really good that color? one? Um, who made that one? I think that was, uh, this was Crunk's Customs. Crunk's, yeah, Crunk's, Crunk's, Crunk's Crankbaits. Yeah. I like it. No, I really like that color. That's really, really cool. And I will tell you, you notice on there too, the red hook in the front and the black in the back. One thing I've learned working at Jake's, those minnows, uh, when the, right before they die or as they die, they bleed out and that blood right on their bellies and hmm. then their gill plate up here will be red really? and blood. And I can post pictures later, but I think when you see those red hooks or any type of red in there, sometimes that will mimic that dying minnow or dying shad that's easy prey for the fish. Mm -hmm. What do you think about red hooks, Marty? Uh, red hooks? What do you think? <laughs> I, I add them all the time. Uh, even when I'm fishing drop shot, I fish the, uh, uh, the Gamagatsu red hooks really i that's all i use i will use a red hook until there's no more red on it why do you and then i'll switch it up i it just seems to attract the fish more um i've tried you know fishing with buddies in my own boat well, one will fish a non-red hook i'll fish a red hook same bait i seem to get hit more it might be because i'm holding my mouth right but you know <laughs> um yeah, I, I just, for some reason, I, I think that red, especially when it's a little bit shiny and, and you're dropping it down there, I think it gives a little bit 
different flash mm -hmm. uh, with that red, and and they just seem to take it more. You know, I 100% um, agree with you there. And we yeah. do have some questions. Okay, so all we right. got. All right, Boogie Crush, we got question from Marty. I am very into jig fishing. Is there any local company who makes flipping pitching jigs you would suggest? Wait, thank you, bud. That is a great question. Yeah, uh, MES Lures is one. And depending on where you're at, you know, I, I met another guy that has his own company, but he doesn't ship. He's like, yeah, come to my, if you want something, you got to come to my house. And I was like, well, okay. That's going to be kind of hard, but it's uh, Money Maker Jigs, and um, I'll, I'll, I'll put this on too. It's Money Maker Jigs, Barry Cobb out of Chesterville, uh, MES Bates. Got it. Uh, they do a good job. Um, you know, MES Bates also came up with their own blade bait, or like we call chatter bait. And they do spinner baits, and obviously you got companies like uh, Deep Creek. I mean, Deep Creek Lures. If you don't have any Deep Creek Lures sitting around in your tackle box or soft plastic stuff, you need to check them out. I mean, they <laughs> they really put out some nice stuff. Um, yeah, I think yeah, that's uh, Deep Creek right there. Oh, wow. that was when they when they started earlier, and just for. Just for a little bit of tackle talk, I'll tell you what. You see the red flake in that? Oh, that, that is, is nice. unreal. And it's a big, it is a big bait. But I'm thinking I'm going to rig this weightless, no weight, uh, almost like Texas rig, but without the weight. And when those bass start spawning, I'm pitching this right onto the bank. And I'm dragging it across and let that thing skip across the top and drop down by those beds. I think oh. this is just going to kill them. Yeah. Right yeah, there. That's a beautiful color. Well, I remember the garlic scent, too. Deep Creek is known for that really strong garlic scent. Yep. This is uh, this right here is called the DC Super Razor Beetle Watermelon Slice. Hmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that's a, that's a real good bait. I'm looking forward to pitching that when they're on the beds. So if you had um, one color for a soft plastic this time of year, what would you use? Um, honestly, a, a lot of times you would think red. Um, but I'll tell you what, this is uh, this is a grape with, uh, with some blue and red flake in it. Granted, this is KVD, but my buddy also makes them. Oh, that is really, that's a good blue, actually. It's oh, it's a trick worm. It's yeah, the, the the blue flake in there is really something else, but it's more of a grape grape jelly color. Mm -hmm. Um I, I we did great with that. No grape but, worm, man. That's old school. But grape works great on the oh, too. I love purple. purple. Now uh the other soft plastic I'll be throwing is a bubble gum, yeah. you know, the uh the yum bubble gum color as yeah. a floating worm. And then uh the other thing I use is uh, like for drop shot, the trick shot worms from Z-Man in the twilight color. Mm. And it, for some reason, I used that all year last year because I figured out everyone's out there throwing green pumpkin, black and blue, you know, the standard go-to colors. And I just said, you know what? I'm going to throw something different. So I started throwing this twilight color, which is a pink and purple. I got it right here. It's a it's a pink and purple bait, and I I killed him last year. It was amazing, absolutely amazing. Obviously Z man, but look oh, at that. That's almost like um, Robo Worm, uh, Aaron Magic. Uh, uh, yeah, or Margarita. Yes, is another Margarita. one that's close to it. Yeah, but with the Z man, obviously throwing it on a drop mm. shot. The unique thing with the Z man is that floats. Mm -hmm. So if you're using a robo worm or you know one of those other baits that's going to you're going to cast that out and that bait is going to sink so you're going to get a a nose down profile it's going to sink mm -hmm. but z man that bait sits up on your line above your weight and doesn't sink 
Mm. So I think the Z-Man with this, you know, the floating worms, it stays in the strike zone a whole lot longer than your other conventional plastics. That's just my opinion. But yeah, that's honestly, last year, this was it. Z-Man trick shots uh, in that color. I crushed them last year. Yeah, that margarita or morning dawn color, guys, is amazing, especially for like spotted bass. For you guys that are located down close to Kerr Reservoir Gaston, where you have a good spotted bass fishery, that color for some reason on a drop shot or a shaky head Ned rig, it kills them. They love that color. And then, guys, again, like let me know in the episode description, you know, in chat, are there any questions for Marty while we have him on here? Do you guys have any questions for me or Jared? Um, also, if you guys could do us a huge favor, like this live stream and share it to your channel. The, the more we grow, the more people we can have on the show. I want to show you real quick too, Marty, back to the red hooks. I'm going to show it on the screen here. Yeah, that's a dead yep. minnow that we pulled out of the minnow tank just to show that oh, wow. the belly. And I got one yep. more picture. Well, a couple more pictures, but you know, this same thing, they, they bleed out. Let's see if we can find one more. And yeah, Thomas will throw it on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they definitely, and I think there's something to that red hook. I don't think it's just something random. I think it has to do with a. And we do a, have, let's see, you have one question here. I don't know who this is from. This must have been missed. Travis says, I talked with a buddy about smallmouth being found in Yellowstone. How bad did the smallies affect the trout systems? Um, you want to take I this? Can, sure, I can answer this. Uh, being from Maine, I had dedicated trout systems and dedicated smallmouth places. Um, the majority of the time, they're not going to cohabitate. The majority of the time, it's either going to be trout or it's going to be smallmouth. They don't cohabitate very well together. Um, if they're in the same river or body of water, not so much a lake because that, that gets a little tough. I have seen good cohabitation in some of the lakes in Maine where you have lake trout and landlocked salmon, but you also have smallmouth bass. But in river systems, typically you have to really move upstream in the fast water and way up to get the trout. The smallmouth bass typically like to have areas where they can slow down during the spawn because that's the thing. Trout will spawn in really fast water where smallmouth need to make a bed. So if you think of that, that'll tell you the cohabitation between the two is actually separated and you can find that line if you if you investigate your body of water and you can actually see where that cutoff is or there might be a small area where they're merged together but usually they're they're pretty far apart in, in my honest opinion yeah that's and travis all i can add to that is just from my swim bait experience and that's really i got really big into the big swim baits um trout generally speaking trout smallmouth and largemouth their dynamic is trout become a forward species once they get big enough and trout generally speaking are pelagic so what you'll end up really having is the trout won't be necessarily affected it's kind of like what you hear with like the musky population in the rivers the musky are going to just eat all the smallmouth and then there'll be none left that's not that's not true so if you're saying that the smallmouth are going to just kill off the trout population I, that's not going to happen really um and the other thing that'll happen too, like on a largemouth fishery, is you're going to get some of the biggest largemouth of your life. We see that up around ponds here where the trout are constantly stocked. If you're not throwing a massive trout swim bait, you're not going to get bit by anything because those largemouth and those smallmouth, those bigger ones get smart and they know that this is a high protein meal. So, you know, hopefully all of us kind of answered your question here. And I do have uh, Jared's share this real quick with you guys. Here we go. So this is, uh, Jerry, you want to take it take it away here? Yeah, so I was saying before, like the red hooks, uh, just, you know, working the bait and tackle shop, I learned a lot from customers. And then just, you know, the minnow tank is we're giving out minnows and stuff as they die. The dead minnows a lot of times will bleed out. Um, and they're either the gill, gill plate or on, on the underside. And I just put one next to a Lucky Craft to kind of see. And this is why they're, you know, putting that out there. But you can see a natural you know bait fish imitation uh, and another thing too on that not only the color but like a wacky worm it's interesting to watch these minnows die in a minnow tank right before they start dying they'll lose their equilibrium they'll get on their side they're no longer upright and they start like fluttering to look exactly like a wacky style uh uh you know wacky worm type of presentation yeah. and they'll just they're kind of in the real erratic too think about uh you know, you've been doing some podcast on the soft jerk bait you know yeah. type thing and that 
you know, just that kind of pause and die, like that's to a fish that needs to eat. That's an easy catch, easy, easy food, you know, source. And what's, so. and what's crazy is to, depending on the, the body of water you're in, like what big companies have to do is mm-hmm. a generic kind of like mm-hmm. a flavor of what they're mm-hmm. like. But if you go down to the body of water, a crayfish in different bodies of water will have different colorations. Right. A bluegill will, a trout mm-hmm. will. And so if you go look at Z-Man, what they're trying to do is like, does this color work for the most mm-hmm. of the time, but not all the time? Right. And I will say too, you know, Marty, to your point about the, the bait manufacturers, the local guys, you're so right. I, we've got some in our shop and, you know, they're going to match. Uh, Roger Fuller, for example, he goes and catches the crayfish out of the Santa River, out of the Potomac in this area. He gets that crayfish and then he mimics his hair jigs off of that crayfish that came out of that body of water. You can't find that from Z-Man or anybody else. Um, it is as natural and real as you can get based on that area to your point. And so I, I tell you what, you mentioned hair jigs. Mm-hmm. Okay. When I lived in Maine and even when I went back, I was in the Navy, I went back and I'd fish anytime I'd go to Maine. But I'll tell you what, you know, Z Man does their micro jigs. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's it's a plastic skirt, okay? But I'll tell you what, if I could find someone that would tie deer hair jigs mm-hmm. with that, you know, that uh, Ned style head. If I can find someone that'll do that, that would be my go-to for smallmouth. We can get them to you. Yeah, a deer hair jig on a net head is exactly what I want. But it has to be hand-tied. And I was actually thinking about, you know, going and buying some fly tying stuff and making it myself from for myself. But you if send I can, me a picture of what you want, we can make it happen. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah, I mean. You know, I being a former fly tire, I know the stuff is out there to get. Mm-hmm. And it's I'm just really surprised that I haven't seen smallmouth anglers really keying in on those deer hair jigs. I think they um, are. I just yeah. don't think they're well, talking about it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, when I used to fly fish for smallmouth, the best fly was called a muddler minnow. Yep. And if you look at that, that is a deer hair fly. Um and you could add a little bit of color to it and things like that. It mimics a crayfish. And I, I just think the deer hair jig and the way that moves in the water, especially like you get a deer hair jig, you dip the tips yep. uh, red. You don't even need a trailer. And and that's what I used to fish with. I can't find them down here. Well, I can send you one that, uh, or show you one, send you one. This is kind of one I've tied for one of our anglers, um, and he just loves it. He's fishing the river. He swears yeah. by it. Um, you know, you're exactly right. The hair, and to your point, um, I've always said, too, when you can, we talk about being a hybrid, and if you're a fly fisherman, fly uh, hair, natural hair, deer hair, marabou, it's not just for a fly fisherman. And what's no. happened for some hybrid guys is they've, they've taken that that same tactic and, and put it on, like you say, a Ned Hook, Ned Hit Hook, Ned Hook, and... Uh, and throw that out there and it's it's dynamite i mean seth fighter on the circuit he's throwing you know hair jigs and so yeah, uh, you know it, it works your your deer hair is actually hollow it's correct so you know if you lose use a long enough piece on a jig That's right. and you you tie it as you bring that string down it if the short ends are going to flare out mm-hmm. and if you look at z-man that's exactly what they tried to do Mm-hmm. But they're using plastic instead of the real hair. If right. I can find someone, I like the natural deer hair, and then you dip the tips in a little bit of red red dye. Um, it's fantastic. You don't even need a trailer; it just does the job. Now Rogers put his deer. He's doing a deer hair uh, about a two inch, two and three quarter inch, and it's on a archie head. Is what he's doing an archie head with a uh, weed guard, and it's it's pretty solid. And to your point. Guys in our area on the Shenandoah, that that hair jig is uh, tubes and Aces. hair jigs are, are Aces. probably yep. the top two. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we, we got a question here. If you guys want to sure. make sure we answer this here, uh, I mean, Boogie, again, question for all three of you. I am strictly a bank angler, so if there's tips or advice you have for the bank anglers, I have a good assortment of shallow water lures. But is there any you suggest? So, who wants to go first? Um, I can go first. Go for it first. All right. 
So I've gotten the same question on my YouTube channel, and I'm actually going going to go and take some video of different shore areas because it really depends on what you're looking at. You have to be able to read the water. If you see, you know, grass growing out 30 feet out from the bank, that's going to restrict what you can do. But honestly, for me, the first thing I throw from the bank is a wacky worm. Really, it gives you versatility. It sinks slow. When you start hitting the grass, you can jerk it out of the grass, and that's when you're going to get your strikes. So I, I think from a bank, a wacky worm, or maybe even, you know, Nico rigged um, will just give you the versatility you need to fish from the bank. If you want to start throwing lures and things like that, uh, you know, Texas rigs or shallow running crankbaits, depending on where the weeds are. I, I know a lot of guys that throw square bill crankbaits from the bank on, uh, you know, this structured area where there's rocks and things like that. And they have a lot of success. But for me, it would be wacky worm first thing. And if you watch my second video, I actually show in a, show a wacky wig rig tip where I use two O-rings on a worm so that you can save your baits, okay? Uh, I, I have that tip on my video that, yeah, go go and watch it. You can skip to that part. I don't care. I'm not in it for the views or anything like that. Just go and find where I start talking about a wacky worm. And for you bank anglers, wacky worm with the trick that I show, you're going to have success. That's what I throw. What about you guys? I would start with a like a Ned rig, like you were saying earlier, a Ned rig that can be fished on the bottom, uh, slow, pop it, drag it. And then also before you finish with that, go ahead and swim it, like slow roll it is an interesting technique that, you know, tends to work. And then the other thing would be like a, just a little swim bait, maybe a three inch swim bait and a Kai tech and a shockwave, missile shockwave. Uh, I probably have one of my biggest, not, not my biggest, but, you know, four plus pound smallmouth um, on the bank with a three inch swim jig and, and this time of year too an interesting thing on that we always think slow fish is slow and you can drag that along the bottom nose down tail up but at the same time it's that old adage of how do the fish want it and don't be afraid to slow roll it it's just enough so the tail is is you know getting some you know swing in it um it hit it on a faster retrieve rather than slow retrieve. So just, you know, I think those two things, I always look at bottom of the water column, middle of the water column, something that you can work with both things. Mm -hmm. both I areas. agree with that. Um, I mean, look, at this is a loaded question. So any more intel on it would, would be great. I did a video of my top five bank baits this time of year. And one thing I talked about there is like, it depends on the pond that you're doing, let's say, because if you have a, a generically a pond has a muddy bottom so that eliminates a lot of baits that like a crankbait this time of year well if you're fishing most farm ponds around here um depending there's no point in fishing a crankbait because you're going to bog it down in the mud the leaves so it really is depending on the pond so instead of baits i'm going to go down the rabbit hole of of then if you guys want me to do a live stream specifically on bank fishing where i just basically just rant for three hours on it let me know in the comments below Start Googling the way Japanese anglers approach their lakes. That's what got me so good at it. Because guess what? They have four bodies of water in that country. And so what happens is those fish get very educated. And so it's not just the baits, but it's your tackle. And it's your line size. And it's your hook size. Because those fish have seen everything. Um, that four and a half pounder I caught from Wilkinson Lake. The reason I caught him, I had to downsize the four pound main leader to actually catch him because if i was at six i couldn't get bit but for some reason i went to four it made that difference so a lot of times it's not just the bait a wacky one would work great but then check all the other tackle are you going light enough um right yeah those those fish get really educated too and that's why you'll see guys and you'll see them when you go to like trout ponds oh he caught a bass well why did he catch that bass well if you're in trout gear you're generally fishing two to four pound line and a smaller bait that's the next approach so if you go to your pond or whatever I, I challenge you to do that try to go down to four five maybe two pound test a small kitech swim bait um a little trout magnet a, a super small net head you will get bit with that and you'll be shocked when you get used to that equipment how big of a fish you can catch when you learn how to play them so you know hopefully do that answers your question that's a great great question
Yeah, it is. Um, and, and you mentioned the light tackle. You know, uh, I'm a finesse guy. I used to fish in Maine with two pound test and catch smallmouth all day. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's it's super light. Uh, that's because you're fishing in such crystal clear water. You know, where I fished in Maine, I could look down and see boulders 30 feet down in the water. So that's crystal clear. Okay. That's so nice. two pound test, you had to go with it because otherwise your line is just visible to everybody. What I use typically right now for all my finesse rigs, I use either a, a six or an eight pound uh, cigar and Vizex. And then for my, for my, uh, for my bait casters, I'm only at 12 pounds. That's all I throw. I like the light line. I think it it's, uh, you know, when you start getting into the technical stuff about your line and how it affects the baits and everything, for the normal guy, look, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have ten different rods rigged with different line to fish different conditions. You're gonna have one rod, one reel. So what is your best bet? Okay, my best bet for me is a bait caster with twelve pound fluorocarbon. My spinning rods with either six to eight pound test. You know, depending on what you have, the lighter line that you can be comfortable with is the better line. Yeah, that's what yeah, I believe. Yeah, and I'll 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 double that. Like the, the lighter the line you go, guys, the more bites you're gonna get. And Aaron Martin, who is so cool, um, God rest his soul, he did an interview where he said, the lighter you go, the more bites you get, but the more you're gonna break off. So finding that sweet spot of you're gonna get enough bites, but you're also gonna actually land those. There you go. It's four pound test with a Ned rig right there. That's what I use on the Rappahannock for smallmouth. Now, do you go braid uh, braid to leader or do you go straight? No, straight, straight fluorocarbon. Okay. This is uh, tinted green. Uh, this is actually the one that I use in the water when it's a little stained. Um, and then I have another one that's, that's just as small. This is, this is a five foot rod. And it's, you know, it's a it's light tackle. That's what I use in a Rappahannock for smallmouth. I'm not afraid. I'm used to using really light line. If you're not used to that, I'd stay in that eight pound test range, honestly. And so, guys, before before we before we let um, let him go, um, please, like, guys, ask any more questions in the comment section so we, we can make sure we can get this fantastic guy uh to answer them for you and then again follow him on youtube uh, do you have a, a website or anything else that we can plug for you besides your youtube channel no not yet i gotta get the instagram and and the twitter thing is going yet yeah look i'm old okay so i'm not all that tech savvy crap I'm you know you, I'm, I, you. I, I'm just <laughs> you know i i'm uh, being really nice on this video because because you know i i'm a sailor i got a I got a mouth like a sailor, okay? So, yes, I cuss and all that. I have to be careful with that. I don't want to offend anyone, but, you know, I'm, I'm also the old guy that's, if I offend you, well, okay, sorry. <laughs> you know, um, hey, one other bait company I want to mention before I go is uh, Gray Goat Lures. And there's a guy named Al, and they make uh, spinner baits. And I'll tell you what, custom spinner baits – but they have they have a different way of doing the skirt where it actually flares out more mm -hmm. away from the spinner bait. It's it's very unique the way they do it. Um, and when I did my video where I was walking around the show, I actually feature him in a in a portion when I was walking around the show. Great looking stuff, all handmade. Um, and yeah, I I think uh, I think if you talk to Al from gray ghost lures he'll hook you up with some really nice spinner baits that's awesome and again guys uh when i re-upload this live stream i'm gonna have a link to all the companies marty has been talking about as well as a link to his channel if uh if you guys didn't find it already and again hit the like button please share this video on your facebook or, or whatever social media outlets you have the bigger this is the more guests we can have on we can start getting more content out there to really just promote everyone in this area regardless of uh, whatever you try to catch. Um, let's see. Questions here. Let's see. 
more here. Yeah, BFS. Like, okay, so guys, if you don't know what that is, uh, BFS, that's bait caster flipping system or finesse system, bait caster finesse system. That was, again, a Japanese thing that came over here where they would catch their trout and their bass on basically a bait caster setup for trout that can handle one, two, three, four pound tests. Uh, and I honestly think that is going to be the wave of the future because usually what happens in Japan, usually it starts in California, then it comes over here because we have more and more anglers thanks to COVID. We have more anglers in the system now and these fish are more pressured. So I think the idea of a guy winning with a big broomstick and 60 pound braid, just one rod, I think that's going away, especially look at the Bassmaster Classic. Like there was, yeah. Christy was even laughing about like, I didn't think I'd win this thing with a fairy wand in my hand. Yeah. So yeah. It, it's just crazy. Like what, what, how this is coming back around where when I was a kid and I, I did a little bit of high school fishing, you know, they would laugh at you if you just used a spinning rod. Yeah. You had to know how to use a bait caster. Yeah. The big power fishermen, they're, they're, uh, and they're resistant to it, but they realize if they want to catch a check, they got to pick up, you know, that spinning rod because mm -hmm. otherwise it's not when you're, you can only not catch fish so long before you got to make a change. And yep. sometimes that's what it is. Take one of that lighter, lighter stuff. And that really helps kids in this area, especially. Uh, so we're here, guys, uh, supporting the Berkeley Springs High School fishing team. You know, if you're in the Shenandoah and the, the upper Potomac, you're used to fishing the spinning rods. Correct. And you see these anglers going to these other lakes and they're doing success. Correct. Very successful. A chairman. And I know you've talked too about downs like your like smaller. I remember a while back when you talked to the youth about smaller crankbaits mm -hmm. that can be thrown on a spinning rod. Yep. Smaller jerk baits can be thrown on a spinning rod. All your plastic, your net rigs, like spinning rod is a, is a good personal uh, and talking about bank fishing too, you're not carrying 10, 15 rods to the bank. So no. a good spinning rod setup, you know, you can fish pretty much everything you need to yeah. um, and, and get by and catch fish. You can catch fish. And then, Boogie, just to like another add to that, it's like, I think you guys, if you want to be a well-rounded angler, absolutely learn the bait caster, but you don't need it. I started right. fishing saltwater. And what I didn't understand is, like, I could take, I could wrangle a tuna or a shark with a spinning reel. But then bass fishermen are like, well, you can't throw heavy line or, like, winch in a bass on a spinning tackle. It's like, well, that doesn't make sense because then when I go striper fishing and I catch a 30-pound striper, I, I have proper gear right. for it. right. And so it's a cultural thing more yeah. than the tackle. So just if you can't find the spinning rod to throw heavier stuff, look in the saltwater department. I when I won my when I won the, the six grand of fishing in ABA, I was using a lipless bait, but I was using an inshore spinning rod combo because I could get more distance. You try to bomb cast a lipless on a spinning reel combo, you can throw three football fields away. And so the pressure's gone. And that's the thing spinning tackle gives you is you can outcast any bait caster on the planet. You see this yeah. a lot with like Lake Murray. When you do the blueback, you can sit on that point and wherever they come up, man, you can just launch and get to them. So, you know, hopefully that, that helps you guys out. Yeah, I'll tell you what, with uh, with a spinning rod, you know, some of the things you can do um, and, and really bomb some casts is using uh, like a little George. Um, you know, are you familiar with that? Okay. Nope. All right. Sorry, I got my tackle box in my lap. You're good. Here. All right. Show you what I'm talking about here. And it is, uh, it is. A, a, a way to finesse fish, but you're using a much heavier bait. But you want to make these long casts. That is, oh wow, oh, okay. A little oh. George actually, uh, six cents makes these, and this is all lead. This is this <laughs> whole body is metal. And I'll tell you what, you can chuck this a country mile with a spinning rod. And what I like to do is I'll tuck that spinning rod into my belly and I'll take my hand and put hold it on the line as I'm reeling because sometimes you'll get really subtle bumps. And with only having one treble, you know, you feel that subtle bump, you stop and it starts to fall and that's when you'll get the hit. Um, and I use, I use spinning tack on it. I have yet to throw that on a bait caster because I want to feel that subtle little bump and then I stop, it drops and they grab it. Okay. So, you know, and a lot of times that's, that's a predatory thing is sometimes bass will just swipe at something to kind of knock it down a little bit and then they'll grab it. So 
that's the other trick people always talk about you know let that bait fall jerk it jerk it let it fall especially with a chatter bait you know a lot of people just constantly reel it in don't do that reel it in stop turn it a couple fast times stop a lot of times you'll get those hits on the fall okay <laughs> Marty, th thank you so much. Uh, again, guys, please, like, rip and lips with, with, with Marty Lawson. Uh, like and subscribe to his YouTube channel. We are going to be having him back on in the future, hopefully not not, not too soon, off in the future, uh, talking about all the fishing opportunities in Fredericksburg area. And then we also talked, uh, you know, a couple days ago. I'm going to try to get down there with him later this year, and we're going to shoot some videos just highlighting that. Because, again, it's fishing the DMV that's part of this area. You know, people down in Fredericksburg, they work in the DMV area, guys. So this is all connected. So hopefully we'll be getting that going, too. Um, Marty, anything else before we let you go here? No, you just got to tell me when you're ready to come down, whether or not you want to <laughs> wade up in the Rappahannock or go catch largemouth over in uh, Hunting Run or, or Mooney or something like that. Probably um, wait on the waiting until May, at least. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> come on now. You know, yeah. uh, it's uh, – yeah, I, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm – I'm going to be 57 years old here in a couple of days, and I dare you to find guys my age jumping around the rocks like I do up on the Rappahannock. <laughs> I'll challenge anybody. I don't care. I'm I'm a fat old man, and I love doing it because it's it, you're catching fish. It's all that matters. <laughs> Marty, it's been awesome. Thank you so hey, much for coming on this morning. Yeah, thank you. And uh, really, anyone that has questions, if you jump on my YouTube, you don't watch the whole video, I don't care. But if you post a comment, question or something that you want to see me do or go over i'd be more than happy to do that i'm always looking for ideas um i'm on facebook just marty lawson um find me ask me questions i'll be more than happy i just want to help people catch fish that's it awesome all right thank you marty Thanks, see you later. guys Thanks, all right marty. appreciate it I was Mar Marty Lawson, Ripping Lips, everybody. That was that was awesome. That was good. That, that was, was really good. good. More good information. I mean, if you can't listen to these and then mm -hmm. pick up on a name or a, or a bait or whatever, and like I'm always you know, shocked by that. It, it's always like, shocked by uh, that. Something new. You know? Even the minnow thing, like that's like, yeah, yeah, it's like you don't think about that. Like, yeah, minnows are different in every lake or whatever. Yeah. And I just clicked with that, like those color powers. Oh, that's different. But it's like, ah, oh, that's that's Frederick area. That's right. Yep. It's got to be different down there. You're mostly your title, you're closer to the Chesapeake. This, like again, it's just it's just crazy about thinking about this stuff. Yeah. So guys, we're gonna take a, a little bit of break here. Um, this guy has got to drive down to uh, Smith Mountain Lake mm -hmm. to hopefully help some kids uh, yeah. not freeze to death. <laughs> yeah, hopefully catch some fish. So <laughs> what's uh, temperature supposed to be like down there? It's I think it's 22 to... in the morning tomorrow morning at launch, and then wow. it's supposed to warm up to about 50. So uh, mm -hmm. it'll be a little tricky in the morning though. I think yeah. cold. But uh, I wanted to say too, I think we got uh, some guests coming up. We talked to Jeff Green today. Mm -hmm. He'll be coming up this month. Uh, when it'll drop, maybe into April. But yeah. we're going to be sitting down with him, Chris Gorsuch. Uh, guide on the Susquehanna River. We'll be talking to him. Mm -hmm. Matt Strike with SB Fishing uh, is on deck too. Uh, not today, but you know, on the future podcast. Mm -hmm. um, and then guys like Brian Schmidt, uh, he's coming to the Jake's Bait and Tackle April 23rd. Yep, we got him uh, coming Prior to that, we want to get him on a, on a podcast and uh, we'll be talking to John Cruz you know, to get him on both those guys fish the classic so uh, a lot of good things coming thomas yeah we do can't just thank you enough for you know your equipment and knowledge and to bring this digital yeah. uh to us digitally and just the idea of fishing the dmv uh, regardless of your age where you're at your region like we're all we all have the same passion for fishing mm, absolutely and to share that uh i think it's been really cool so and, and thanks really to all you guys it. just showing up like mm -hmm. and asking questions and because again like i we cannot make adjustments to the content without you guys telling us what you want to hear. Right. So I know, I know Boogie said like, I should do an episode just on bank fishing. Yeah. I didn't even think of that. Not everyone has a boat or a kayak. Right. Why don't we do that? Like, yeah. so like, thank you guys so much for like giving us feedback. Cause I want to adapt and get better with this. Right. Cause again, I was a kid at one point where I didn't have the information. I knew about like Gunnersville, but I didn't know about the ponds around here. Right. And that's so important if you want to get the next generation. Home. That's correct. But I think we're going to go to a quick commercial break, guys, and then we'll be back to kind of finish up here. we got about 15, 20 minutes left uh, in this live stream. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you shortly. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.